yellow and today we're going to be talking about how to make this it's basically a tab view with a bar at the top in the which you can click or you can swipe between the different views also you get this nice little underline effect as you go through you've probably seen this in a lot of google products but today we're going to be making it in swift ui and also before we get started on this if you want a link to the medium article as well as the github it's in the description down below but let's get started so first things first let's open up xcode create a new xcode project this is going to be an app in the which we'll click next and for the product name give it whatever you want we'll put it underline and then let's go ahead and hit next and create and this should all be in swift ui as that's what we're going to be working with so let's see we have the underlying application we got the content view so now this is where we can get started with things so first things first let's let's figure out the views that we want to put in there so i'm going to go ahead and say new uh, group in the which we'll call this the views we'll say new file uh, this will be uh, view one let's go new file again we'll call this view two and then lastly we're going to create a new file and this is view three and so each of these views are going to be our different tab views so our, for our first view here we can say struct uh, let's just say view one again colon view and then we're going to say var body colon sum view uh, we also have to import swift ui let's remember to do that and then we of course need to return a body so for each of these i'm going to do a pretty simple let's say color and then let's say this first one's going to be yellow we'll give it a little bit of an opacity just so it's a little bit neater looking and then for the frame of it we're going to say dot edges ignoring safe area and we'll say all this way it just ignores the bottom area and the top area but this is completely optional but uh, just for demonstration purposes I think this looks nice and then basically we're going to copy this into our view 2 and our view 3 and then we'll just change a few things so for our view 2 here switch it to view 2 we'll make it color dot red and then voila and then for our view 3 we can do the same we'll say color dot green and there are our three views then inside of our content view we're basically just going to put a tab view but on top of the tab view is where we want to add our underlying uh, navigation bar tab bar at the top so this is where we're just going to say z stack then we have the tab view inside of that and then we have to have a, a selection right and the selection here is going to be which is our current tab right so i'm just going to create a variable up here say at state var current tab colon int uh, will be equal to zero and then we'll bind this to our selection and then for each of the tabs this is where we're going to be using those views that we just created so we'll say view one open close parentheses view two and then view three and then of course we need to tag each of these so we know which one applies or which tab number or current tab number applies to which view so that's where we say dot tag is zero and we say dot tag one and then dot tag two and now if we were to resume this we should be able to see the different views displayed inside of our tab view first off we're not working in the 2013s uh, so let's go ahead and resume that again with a new iPhone and there you have it so you can see this is the current tab here uh, and then we have view one view two and view three now you would have a tab bar at the bottom uh, but this is where we actually say tab view dot tab view style and then we're going to say page with the index mode of never so this is I'll, I'll show you what this does but if we were to build and run this again you can quickly swipe between the different views already so this is a very simple way of basically getting a page view inside of your application now you'll see that those colors don't extend to the edge anymore so that's where we say dot edges ignoring all uh, that should fix that so now it fills the entire screen sorry my mouse went weird there <laughs> and then yeah if you were to say index display mode dot let's say always you would get these little dots at the bottom indicating which is your current tab now if you want that you can do that but for our sakes we're not going to do that because we'll have the thing at the top displaying which is our current tab then now that we have these views let's get working on our our, our tab bar our navigation bar whatever you want to call it i'm going to keep messing up the name here so uh, basically what we have is we first have some items to put inside of the tab bar 
And so let's say this is one item, this is another item, and then a pretty cool tab bar is another item as well. So we're switching between different items. Now each of these items is a view. So we're going to say uh, struct, let's say tab bar item, in the which this is going to be a view, var body some view. And then inside of here, each of these is a button. Uh, that way, that's what makes it so we can like click between each tab. So we'll have a button, and then we'll also have the label attached to the button. And for the label, uh, we're saying it's a V stack. We'll put a spacer up at the top here so that it pushes everything kind of down. Then underneath this spacer, this is where we want to have a text, right? So we'll go ahead and put a text view. And then what text are we going to display? Now I have this basically coming from an array of strings. So in order to first give this a string, let's say we provide a tab bar item with a string. Um, actually, let's go ahead and say it's like the tab bar item name. And then that's going to be a string variable. And then also with this, when we click it, we're changing the tab, the current tab that we're displaying. So we also want this to actually bind to the current tab here. So we're going to say at binding var current tab. And then of course this is a, an integer here. But also in in addition to this, there will be a tab number assigned to this tab bar item, right? So we're going to say var tab colon integer as well. Now just to clean this up a little bit, I'll put the binding up here at the top, give it some spacing. There we go. So now inside of the text, we can say tab bar item name. And then inside of our button, we can say self.current tab will be equal to tab. And so before we get going with the underlying aspect of this, let's go ahead and create our tab bar view itself. So we're going to say struct tab bar view, colon view, and then var body view, or some view. And then inside of here, we're basically going to have a scroll view in which this is going to be an H stack. We'll have a little bit of spacing in the H stack as well between each of the items. So we'll say H stack with a spacing of 20. And then inside of this H stack, we're going to have each of these tab bar items. But how many tab bar items are we going to display? Now that's where we get into creating a new variable that will hold a list of strings, basically. Uh, so we'll say this is my tab bar options. Maybe not the best name, but it works. <laughs> so we'll put this as an array of strings, and then we'll set this equal to, and then we can say whatever you want. So I'll say hello world. This is something cool that I'm doing. And that uh, I, I just want to be able to show like the 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 medium, the small, and as well as the large tabs, because you get this really cool effect of everything growing between them. So yeah. So now inside of this, let's say for each, in the which we have our data here. So let's just add the content there. And for the data here, we're actually going to zip an array of our tab bar items together. So I'll explain this in a little bit. So we'll say array, then we say zip, and then we have two sequences, right? So we have self.tabbarItems.indices. So this will grab the number at which the tab bar item is located. So for instance, hello world is zero, this is is one, and then something cool I'm doing is two. Um, and so now if we take that and we're basically binding it together with our self.tabbaroptions, we can take the ID now and we'll say slash dot zero, and now, inside of here we can get both the index as well as the name inside of there. And so now when we're actually adding our tab bar item, we can provide it with those necessary variables as well. So we'll say tab bar item, open parentheses, we'll say our current tab, we'll say self, and then we have to bind it to our current tab. So that's another thing here. So let's go ahead and say at binding var current tab, and then call an integer. And so now let's bind it to our current tab. For the tab bar name here, we'll put our name. And then for the tab, we're going to put our index. And so now if we resume this, uh, it's not going to do anything, but you can see that our code is building and running. Uh, so that's good. 
Then with this entire tab here, let's add a, a white background. Say dot background uh, is color dot white. We'll say dot uh, height or frame height uh, will be equal to, let's say 80. And then let's just add this puppy in here. So we have a Z stack and we're wanting to be on top of the Z stack, right? So let's go ahead and say tab bar view. Our current tab, let's bind it to our self current tab. And there you can see that that's going on. It doesn't look great, but stay with me. <laughs> so first things first, we want to put this at the top, right? So we'll say alignment on our Z stack here is going to be dot top. So it shoves it to the top. And then you can also see that there's some weird spacing and padding going on here. So first we're going to say dot edges, ignoring safe area. We'll say dot all. And then that's going to put that at the top here. And then for the something cool I'm doing here, you can see that it's not conforming to the scroll view because the scroll view is pretending that it's vertical at the moment. That's where we go to our scroll view here. And we want to make sure that the axis that it's actually like scrolling is horizontal and not vertical. That way we get this kind of look now. Now you can also see with that we get this no annoying little scroll bar here as well, so we're gonna fix that. So inside of our scroll view, we'll say shows indicators and we'll say false. And so now when we actually do scroll, it's not gonna show that. But you'll notice that when we actually do click on these, it's weird that button didn't work. Uh, it's kind of a weird touch target. We're gonna have to fix that. Apparently if you click above the text, you're fine. Let me see if I click directly on the text. Okay, directly on the text works as well. Maybe not. <laughs> so for the H stack here, we're also going to say dot padding uh, in the which we're gonna put it as horizontal padding so that we just get a little bit of nicer here. And then also you'll notice that this text here is automatically blue. So that's just not something I want. So if we go here, we say dot button style, we'll add it as plain, that's going to make these black here. And now to get that cool little animation that we were talking about before, there's this thing called matched geometry effect. And so basically what this does is it copies the original geometry of the first object and copies it to the second object. And so that, that, that's very basic terms, there's much more going on there, but very basic terms, that's what it means. So we're going to say at namespace var namespace and then down here, we're going to say on top of our color, we'll say dot match geometry effect. Uh, we're going to give it an ID and also a namespace. And then we also want to copy the properties. So we'll say properties. So for the ID here, uh, we're going to make sure that it's just underline. For the namespace, we're going to add the namespace that we just created. And then for the properties, we're going to copy the frame. And you'll now see if I were to switch between these, there's still no animation. Now why is that? So now we just need to go over to our V stack here and we say dot animation, uh, we'll make it spring for the value of our self dot current tab. So now as the value of our current tab changes, uh, it should also change, you know, the animation that goes on. And so now we get a little bit of an animation, but it's still not moving over. And so that's where we bring in this thing, which I call the hidden underline. So we're going to say color dot clear uh, dot frame with the height of two. And so now if we were to move between, same thing. Okay, wait, what's going on? Now you'll notice that the animation isn't going on between the different views. Now there's a reason for this. It's because it's creating a new namespace every time. So in order to fix this, uh, this isn't an issue I had before because I did it the simple way of creating everything in one view. Uh, but here in order to fix this, we just say let, uh, let namespace colon and then we'll make it a namespace dot ID. And then here inside of the, the uh, parent view in our tab bar view here, we're going to go ahead and resume this. It's going to throw an error saying that we're going to need to provide the namespace ID inside of our tab bar item here. And we say namespace.self. And so that namespace.self you could see is a namespace ID. So now let's resume that. And you should get the passing along of the cool views. 
and this should happen when you're switching between tabs and whatnot. So pretty cool. I think that looks great and our touch targets seem to be a little bit better now. <laughs> so it fixed itself. Anyway, there you guys have it. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, share, subscribe, all the good things. If you didn't like it, be sure to send it to someone you hate. I'm sure they'll hate it too. Anyway, see you in the next one. Bye.